QuickBooks Desktop 2024 Negative AR Customer Prepayment Deposit Estimate Sales Order Receive Payment. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample company file we set up in a prior presentation using the enterprise version of the QuickBooks desktop software so we can practice with the new unearned revenue feature within it. Under the view tab settings, we have the hide icon bar selected, open windows selected, so we can see the open windows on the left hand side home page open you can open it by going to the company drop down and home page opening up the major two reports like we do every time by going to the reports drop down company and financial let's start with that balance sheet standard report and change that date to 12 31 2 7 and then i will customize it to make it a little bit bigger fonts and the numbers changing that font size up to 14 okay yes and okay then reports drop down again company and financial this time the p l the profit and loss the income statement changing the date range from 010127 i'm just going to go out to 022827 this time for two months so then i can select the drop down here and see it by a month by month breakout and then i'm going to go to the customized reports fonts and numbers font change change font to 14 okay yes and okay so last time we ran the normal scenario where we can see here we ended up with the 75 dollars of uh, the net income now we're going to run the second scenario in uh, february so we'll see it broken out in february back to the home tab so last time we just did the normal cycle meaning we started with an estimate had no transaction recorded for it and then we went to the sales order which kind of locks into the, to the estimate we imagined that we were selling a psychedelic custom surfboard so we had to then have a a custom order we created the purchase order for the vendor that we were going to buy the custom surfboard for and then we entered the bill and then the sales order was used to create the invoice once we had the surfboard and could actually sell it and then we went to the receive payment so now we're going to go to a, a similar process but this time we're going to say that hey uh this guy's crazy this psychedelic why does he want a psychedelic surfboard this guy's kind of weird maybe i don't do i trust that this guy's going to pay me i don't know so maybe before i order the surfboard then i ask for a deposit to lock in to lock this thing in because i don't want to be stuck with this crazy psychedelic surfboard if no one's going to buy it because you know I, you know so we're going to lock in a deposit at this sales order point so let's look at it from the standpoint of our excel worksheet so within excel this was what we did last time and and this and these three points that the estimate the sales order purchase order and no transactions related to that then we entered a bill to get the in, to get the inventory then an invoice and then we received the payment let's copy this over i'm going to double click on this tab i'm going to call it 1135 this time and i'm just going to delete everything in blue and i'm going to delete all everything in this middle bit right here delete the middle bit these two maybe these shouldn't be blue i just want it on the data input side of things let's unblueify that 
unblueify and unblueify over here too so that everything is properly there okay everything needs to be represented well okay so then let's go back on over so we're going to do the same thing starting with an estimate starting with an estimate this time i'm going to call it another two and i'm going to call it a negative a r prepayment payment uh customer i know that's a weird customer name but the idea is that we're going to try to keep everything separate so it's related to this practice quick add to the customer and we're going to say the date here sometime in february 020127 tab 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 the item same thing to negative ar prepayment item we're going to set up a new item in other words tab and we're going to order the psychedelic surfboard we're going to call it an inventory part and i'm going to say that this is going to be same name down here item and then we're going to say cost 100 i'll make it the same as the last one that we did 100 cost of goods sold was here duh, duh, duh. and then 175 is what we sold it for right 175 that's what we did last time am i right am i right could you help me out here i forget i forget sometimes okay i think it's good and then tax will be applied so let's go ahead and do that the income account i'm going to make a new income account just so we could separate it income this time is going to be income and with that same name number two ar negative ar setting up it's going to be an income type of account negative ar i'm not going to put an account number that'll make it even easier to find we're not going to put any inventory on the books yet because we're going to use this to make the purchase order too so we're going to say okay and there it is so this looks like it should record something but we know from last time it doesn't we're just telling the person that wants the psychedelic surfboard that's how much it would cost if you were to do that so if i was to record it and go into my uh, customer center up top now i could say okay there's my new customer there's my estimate i can mail out the estimate to the to the customer i can look at my reports and see the open estimates and whatnot uh, if I so choose and and so on it's just like we did last time if I was to look at it in terms of journal entries same thing up top we have an estimate no transaction happening at that point same 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 then we're going to go back on over and say okay now that they say he's locked in he's going to order that he's good to go with that so we're going to say okay we're going to create a sales order but we want you to give us a down payment, right? So we're gonna say, all right, we'll make a sales order and we want a down payment at this point in time. And he's like, okay, dude, I've got the money. And so we're like, all right. So then we want number two. And then this is gonna be as of 020127, tab, tab, tab. We don't have any purchase order to tie out to uh, in this case, so we're just going to say, okay. Uh, and then we're going to say the purchase order would be if someone was ordering, like uh, ordering from us with the purchase order to another business, for example, but we're saying this is the end customer. So then the item is going to be the two. Oh no, I don't. And it says, I don't have any of those on hand. That's okay. Because I'm not giving it to them right now. I'm going to make a bill for it shortly. So I'm going to say, okay, that's cool. And then, so there's my sales order. Now the sales order is not gonna record anything again, but it's kind of like making the estimate solidified now. This is the step that you might not see if you haven't used the enterprise version and you, you might've just gone from the estimate to, to the receive payment or the sales order. But this time we're gonna say that we recorded here. Now the new step is that I could go to the receive payment, turn on the prepayments from here and then and then use that to record the prepayment which would record it hopefully to a liability rather than a negative receivable but i'm going to first do the old method where we have a negative receivable to compare and contrast and then we'll do the new method here so i'm not going to i'm not going to make the receive payment from it i'm just going to record this i'm going to say save it and close it 
And then what happens on the customer center over here? Now we've got the sales order. Sales order is good to go. If I go back on over here, once again, no, nothing happened for the sales order. Nothing happened. So nothing happened uh, with that one. So then, like before I get the, before I order the inventory from my vendor, I'm like, you need to pay me, let's say $50 uh, in order. To, so, so I'm gonna do the old method then, is I'm gonna go to the receive payment before we enter the invoice and without the turning on of the new, uh, the new feature uh, of, the, of, the, of the liability account of like unearned revenue. Now, again, if you don't, if you don't have the ability to turn on the new thing, uh, be, because possibly you have an older version or something like that, then this would be the method that you might use. And even if you do have the option, again, we'll compare and contrast some of the complicated or the differences between the two. It might, you might still not want to turn it on because it might cause more confusion and it does add a clearing account and whatnot. So we'll talk about that. We're comparing the two. So again, I'm going to say this is number two. There's our customer name and we don't have an invoice to tie out to down here because we haven't made an invoice yet. We're gonna collect the payment first. So the payment is gonna be, let's say for $50, that's the down payment. Are you sure that's enough for this guy? We should, okay, that's, it'll be fine. This guy will pay us. 020127, and let's say we get cash down. There's no nothing to tie it out to. So when I record this, what's it gonna do? Well, the customer prepayment usually will decrease the accounts receivable, but there's nothing in accounts receivable. So it's gonna make a negative accounts receivable. That's wrong, what should it do instead? It should create a positive liability. Why do we want it to create a negative receivable? Because it's easier to make a sub ledger for the negative receivable, right? That's, that's the point. So it's easy, it's kind of easier from the bookkeeping side. So this is where we have something different happening here. So we have the sales receipt. I'm not sure if I spelled that right. What's going to happen? We're going to say we get cash. I'm going to put it into cash instead of undeposited funds. It might go into undeposited funds, but the other side's going to go to the accounts receivable. Like so. And then cash. Where's my decimals up here? Why does everything else have decimals, but not this one? It's crazy. You're making me crazy with the inconsistency. So we have... Now we end up with this negative receivable. So, so again, that's not quite right because it should be down here as a liability account, not a negative receivable. But when I try to track the subledger, it's easier to track a subledger to one account than two accounts. That's, that's the trade-off that we're kind of trying to deal with here. So let's go ahead and record it. Check it out over here. So we'll save it. We'll close it. It says a credit for the overpayment will remain on the customer's account. You can click print credit memo to save the transaction and print a credit memo. Click OK to save the transaction. Click cancel. So I'm going to say OK and boom, recorded. Let's see what happened then. Back to the report. So we're going to go to the balance sheet. And we know that we put, we put money into undeposited funds. I'm not going to get into making the deposit from there, but... It's going into basically a cash account, 010127. And so there's the $50 payment. That looks good. Okay, closing that out. The other side is going into negative accounts receivable. AR 010127. That's going to be the payment. There's the $50. It doesn't make it negative here because we had a bunch of stuff in it already. But when I look at the subledger by customer, it'll be negative for the subledger. So if I close this out, reports drop down and we go into customers and receivables and we say we want the customer balance detail, let's say. You can see here, now we have this AR for this customer has a negative balance. Well, what does it mean if there's a negative AR for that particular customer? That means that they owe us, uh, that, that, that means that we owe them money. <laughs> we owe them money. That's a liability. So it should be a liability. But look how nicely it fits into the AR subledger because we want it to be connected to the customer. That's basically the problem. On the internal bookkeeping side, what happens if I go to the customer center over here and I look at this, my, am I, and I'm, I'm trying to see what, what's going on with this customer. 
it looks it looks reasonable over here because I'm like, okay, what happened? Well, there was an estimate and then a sales order and then a payment, but that payment isn't tied out to anything, right? And it, I can then tie it out in the future when I make the invoice. And so that, so it looks easy internally from an internal standpoint as well. So, so from a bookkeeping standpoint, this actually works fairly well for the sub ledger. The problem is from reporting standpoints, when I report this for financial reporting, I have a, I have my AR is too low and my, my liabilities are too low. So what we would need to do is do an adjusting entry possibly at the end of the year to properly adjust the accounts receivable and the, and the liability. And that system can work fairly well. For, and it's as long as you know what you're doing, you can, you can be, I think, you, you know, a lot of small companies particularly can basically to mid-sized companies can basically work around that kind of system and make the, the internal book, bookkeeping basically as easy as possible. That would be kind of the focus uh, of that kind of system. So also just note that after we're, after we've completed this whole process, then, then it will be correct. And it's just a timing difference. So if I go into my customer balance over here, that negative amount, once I actually uh, uh, do the work and give the surfboard, enter the invoice, these two things will net out and it'll be positive again and we'll be back in business. Also just realize that if I go to the bottom of this report, it ties out to what's on the balance sheet, hopefully. This ties, this is at 92,957,93, balance sheet uh, 92,957,93. So we, that's, I mean, again, that's the key. We have to have the sub ledger tying in to the accounts receivable, even though in this case, this, the accounts receivable is too low by that negative amount. But if you break it out into a liability account, then it becomes a little bit difficult to tie the sub ledger out. So what do you, I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to have two sub ledger uh, kind of accounts. One, that's basically what's going to happen. We're going to have two kind of reports on the sub ledger account that will tie out to a liability and to the accounts receivable. So that adds a little bit of complication uh, to it. So again, there's pros and cons to the methods. But we will continue with this next time. And next time, of course, what we will do is we will uh, complete the purchase of the inventory. Then we'll turn around and invoice the customer. And then we'll see if we can receive the payment from the customer.